Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas with Faith Barbado and the Food Bank and Community Harvest. Is there one of those you prefer to go before the other? If you want our official name, yes, it is Community Harvest, a program of the Akron Kent Regional Food Bank. You know, Community Harvest developed this prepared and perishable food rescue piece, and that will never change. Um, with the help from the food bank and their huge footprint, mm-hmm. we will continue to grow this. And that's something we didn't mention earlier that I'm so excited about. Community Harvest had only rescued food five days a week. Monday through Friday. Got it. With the merger with the food bank, we are rescuing food seven days a week, and we're doing it outside of Stark County. So if you think about Community Harvest, the only prepared and perishable food rescue program in Northeast Ohio, with the food food bank and the smart, smart people that they have up there, we are already expanding. And to do that within one year of a merger, I am so great grateful for That's this great partnership. amazing. Absolutely, yes. And you're talking about food that would be wasted, yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 40% of food ready for harvest in the United States is wasted each year. We're talking about billions and billions of tons of food. And in, in your own household, oh, no. I don't want to put you on the spot to make you oh, guess. You no. want to guess the percentage uh, that families I, I, waste each year? Practically all of my lettuce. Go ahead. How much? 25%. <gasps> There's a lot of no. things. There's a lot of things that contribute to it. Sometimes families are just on the go and they're in a hurry and they yeah. make too much food and they don't they don't want to mess with leftovers or whatnot. Um, a lot of it is just lack of education about the sell by dates on cans. I know with my son, I hope he's not listening to this, he's going to kill me. <laughs> he will look at a can and I'll I'll be preparing dinner and if it's green beans that expired a month ago. He'll refuse to eat them. And I'm, son, it's just a sell-by date. <laughs> okay. Grocery stores aren't miracle workers. They're going to have food sometimes that trickles out that's close to that expiration date. So there's even an app. I wish I was prepared to share this with folks, but there's an app. You can look it up. You can scan your canned good, and it will tell you how long oh, you have to eat it, which is amazing. That's awesome. I'm sure we can Google that and figure out what it is. Sure. Okay, get that app. Help me understand this. There's a sell-by. There's a best-by. There's a used-by date. How do we figure those out? Well, the sell-by date is the date that the grocery store has to sell They have to food. sell it by that right. time. And so most grocery stores don't want to have a sell-by date if it's November 13th, yes. for example. Yes. December 13th. And they have canned goods on the shelves that to say, say December 13th, it doesn't really look good for them to have that on the shelves. So that's the type of food that Community Harvest collects, too. Sure. Our local grocers will collect that and donate it to us probably a month before. So there is a misnomer that Community Harvest will only collect food that's expired or it's not healthy. It's not great. Not not the, not no. the case at all. Still totally good food. Great food. And that's, that's vacuum packed. That's going to last a while, even though it's been, well, my goodness, when you think when people can their own stuff, how long does that last? Like a year, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, and, and most canned goods do last at least one year, sometimes up to two years, depending on the type of food. Mm-hmm. Sauces, red sauces, things like, like that have a shorter shelf life, but those canned vegetables and canned fruits, they can last a long time. So we could be a little more lenient when we're cleaning out our refrigerators and cut back that footprint so we're not throwing away 25% of our own home food. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. that's embarrassing. That's awful. Okay, well, well... you didn't make that statistic your own, so okay. don't beat yourself up too much. <laughs> well, you know what I didn't realize was that powdered things, I don't think of them as going bad, but I actually found out that there was some cocoa... Uh, on my shelf that was probably two or three years old. And I did throw that away because I don't think about powdered things as ever going back. Do you? Well, you're, it's so funny. You have the Star County Health Department in your back door. Right we here, yes. have a couple board members <laughs> yes. that would tell me, rotate, rotate, rotate. So Good that was idea. my advice to your listeners today is rotate your shelves. When you buy new food, put that in the back and move the older stuff to the front, and then you won't have to worry about it at all. I do that in the fridge. I forget about that in the pantry. Mm-hmm. And you know what I like are those pantries that don't have the deep, deep shelves? I'm going to change mine. So there's just skinny little shelves, and you can see everything all at once. That's go. that's gonna, that's gonna my new plan now. You you just announced to all of your listeners what your New Year's, new year's resolution <laughs> it's, it's is. It. It's a good one. Skinny shelves in the pantry, and we're <laughs> switching for sure. You've got a couple of things coming up here that... Um, look really fun, for one thing, to participate in, and also are going to do a lot of good. Help us know, what are they? Well, the first one that's going on through December is the Akron Kent Regional Food Bank Holiday Campaign. And this is a great way to support um, your Akron Kent Regional Food Bank and Community Harvest here locally 
by either donating money or donating canned goods. So we have a lot of people that are doing food drives in their places of work. They're doing it in their communities. They're getting neighborhoods together Smart. to collect canned goods for our cause. Um, during this time, every dollar donated provides four complete meals for those in need in an eight-county radius supported by the Akron Kent Regional Food Bank. They're the first line of defense against hunger, and they're really taking these donations and spreading it very far. Let me stop you right there for a moment. How in the world do you stretch a dollar that far? Well, I think that's with the food bank's capacity. As part of a 200 food bank member agency, mm. they they have all of the resources, the knowledge, the support to take something little and make it big. Mm-hmm. They're amazing. Yeah. So oh proud to gosh. be part of them. Super easy to donate online. Um, you can either donate at the Akron Kent Regional Food Bank um, at akroncantonfoodbank.org or feedingstark.org. Oh, I love that. Okay. Simple and quick. akroncantonfoodbank.org or feedingstark.org. You got it. Got it. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether, if you're in uh, listening from Summit County, Tuscarawas County, doesn't matter, you can go to either one of those. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, so nice to be able to donate online. This time of year, throw yourself, make yourself another cyber whatever exactly. and uh, and do some okay. giving. Another Giving Tuesday. It doesn't have to go. be on a Tuesday, but uh, hop onto those. What else have you got going? Well, you look like a runner. Susie, are you a runner? I'm a walker. Okay. But well, thanks you... for thinking I look like a runner. Absolutely. I am not. I am not yeah. a runner. Walker. I was a little w- winded coming up your stairs earlier. <laughs> but the Akron Kent Regional Food Bank has a really fun event coming up called the Selfless Elf. And this is their fifth year holding this event. Um, it is being held on Saturday, December 16th. Registration starts at 630 in the morning. It starts at 8 a.m. Um, you start at the food bank and you'll... You'll do your 3.1 run or walk and uh-huh. finish at the food bank. They have, what I heard, a surprise visit from Santa. Oh. And what I love about this, you know, there are so many runs in Stark County and the area. They have the cutest elf socks, like striped socks that you get for participating. <laughs> um, they have a contest for best dressed, and people come out in their festive attire. It is so much fun, and I love that it's the perfect way to wrap up the holiday campaign, get people excited about Christmas, um, hopefully that the weather could be even clo- remotely cl- close to what it is today. What yeah, a beautiful, be that'd be great. beautiful day. Um, where are we located here? Uh, December 16th, where do we show up and what time? It starts and finishes at the Akron Kent Regional Food Bank at 350 Opportunity Parkway. Mm-hmm. Registration is available online at selflesself.com. If you register early, it's only $35, and race day registration goes up to 40 Now, do we bring any canned goods with us, or we just come dressed really festive? We dress like elves, is that it? You can dress like elves anything? or Santa. Ugly anything sweaters? Festive. Ugly sweaters. I've seen a lot of those, especially this cold weather yes. coming up. But yeah, it, we always take canned goods, of course. You're welcome to bring those as well. Okay, so go to selflessself.com, not .org. .com. Dot .com. Dot com. Okay, and then it'll have all the registration information there. We can get registered, and that sounds like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And walkers as well as runners. Absolutely. And they only even, three miles. Yeah, they have a separate um, category for serious walkers. So, oh, yeah, okay. you're, you're in. <laughs> okay. Sign, I don't know how serious. you signing up. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. December 16th. And tell us again. I'm sorry. The memory's the first thing to go. What time does that start? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Ooh, bright and early. Okay. Um, then the one that we just look forward to every year in the spring is so much fun. Celebrity cuisine. Love that you do this. Talk about that. This is my, by far my favorite event. I, I think it just summarizes the Community Harvest Program so well. We were started by Tri-County Restaurant Association and other restaurants in the area that were disheartened by the amount of food that was being wasted. So mm-hmm. Tri-County started this event for us 26 years ago. And wow. they bring out their local restaurant partners and purveyors. We typically have between 30 and 30 actually 30 and 40 restaurants that donate food that evening for a great cause for Community Harvest. Folks pay one ticket price of $30. Amazing. We made a commitment to make sure that anybody can attend this event. So we don't have a high ticket price like some events in the area. We want everybody to come out and enjoy themselves, enjoy good food, great friendship. Ryan Humbert will be our radio personality oh, again this year. Fine. He's good. He's hard to part with. We really love yeah. our Ryan. So. Yes. He will be the entertainment again. Um, We are looking forward to expanding this year so we can have some more high-top tables. It was a little tight last year. I'm glad the fire marshal wasn't there. But (laughs) we 
We, we, we'll address that, and we yes. have plans to have more space for people to go around, enjoy great food, and then, of course, we'll have a silent auction where you can get a great deal on items donated by local businesses to support Community Harvest. What I love is that you've got really high-end restaurants participating as well, all sharing their signature dish. That's what's amazing. It's not like, okay, come on over and we'll whip up a salad for you. They are making (laughs) their awesome, awesome food, and you're getting to taste everybody's signature dish for one price of $30. And you can just keep going back in line over and over again, right? I love that. What a great way to look at it. So I always say it's a great opportunity to get frog legs. Yes. And then you just go to the next table <laughs> and you're having like Taggart's ice cream. I mean, it doesn't yes. get much better than that. But yeah, they are signature dishes. It gets a wee bit competitive mm-hmm. as each restaurant wants to showcase what they're known for. So and we be- always tell people to support these restaurants because without them, actually 60% of our operating income comes from this event. Well, so. I... I- uh, and it's amazing that they're all donating this. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not getting any of the money that comes through. It's, uh, it all goes to Community Harvest. No, it's not like a fair one of those events where food uh, or Vendors, restaurants would, yeah. Would, yeah, would pay $500, $1,000, whatever. They get nothing for doing it. They donate all of their food. They donate their time, the staff to be there. It's amazing. And we're really blessed to have good supporters. A majority of the restaurants that participate in Celebrity Cuisine actually donate to the Community Harvest program in some way or another. And I do. You're right. They like uh, to think that they are the one that had the longest line. Mm-hmm. Everybody. And and talk about you get to meet some really fun people like the mayor and so forth. They're all out there slinging hash that night, right? You know what? I'm so happy that you said that. I had some friends that came from an, another county, and they're like, you have your mayor here. You have you have some big political faces here. And not other not every other county has that. We're blessed to have great leadership in in our leaders in this area that support local causes. And I'm I'm glad that you mentioned that. We do have some national folks, Matt Wilhelm, Ohio State player. Uh, We're hoping to have him come out again this year. And of course, Bruno Gunn from Hollywood. Bless his heart. He loves this program and supports us every year. So hopefully he can make the trip back from California again this year for the third year in a row. Oh my goodness, that'd be so fun. Yep. And we should tell everyone where this takes place and and when it will be. Yeah, it's, it's coming right up. I mean, <laughs> starting to stress me out having this interview with you because <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. Yes, you do. It's Tuesday, March 20th at mm-hmm. the Canton Memo- Memorial Civic Center, 530 to 8 o'clock. I mentioned earlier that the ticket price will remain $30 for general mm-hmm. admission. So important to us in Tri-County. And you can get a table of eight for as low as $400. So I mentioned earlier I'm getting a little stressed out, so I'm going to run back to the office. Um, We have a lot of work to do, but we're trying to have tickets available for Christmas sales. Oh, how perfect. What a wonderful thing to tuck into someone's Christmas stocking. Absolutely. So you can call me at the Community Harvest office. Our phone number there is 330-493-0800. Say that again, please. 330-493-0800. Or you can visit the... Community Harvest website at communityharveststark.org. And we will have ticket information now that I've had this interview and I'm a little stressed. We'll have that up and ready to go (laughs) within the next week under the events and fundraising page. All right. We'll give you a little time to get that done because you've got a few things, a few irons in the fire. But, uh, yeah, that's a great stocking stuffer. What a great thing to do. Faith Barbado from the Community Harvest. Let's say it the right way. Say the whole thing. Community Harvest, a program of the Akron Cant Regional Food Bank. Awesome. Thanks for all you do in our community. Thank you, Susie.